Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're not going to be bringing on just one mindset coach, we're going to be bringing on two. Because when you have one, you have an awesome time, but when you have two, you have a party. So today we're going to be bringing on a mindset and transformational coach, Kian Yu. And the conversation, I do have to warn you, is not going to be your regular interview here on Coaching in Session. What went on was I started to ask some questions and it was starting to be a quick conversation between us because I wanted to really dive deep into his mindset because as a mindset coach, especially as talking to other mindset coaches, I'm always interested in how they think, how they develop their thought patterns because how I think is wildly different than some mindset coaches. I'm all of like militant, pedal to the floor, do or die, right? And then there's going to be some people who are just like more self-love, self-care. Typically, those are going to be your more, um, you know, worldly coaches where they're just kind and generous. And me, yes, I'm kind. I'm a good guy. But at the same time, I want results. And those results can come with some difficulty. And I understand that. That's why I'm not everyone's cup of tea. If you want results, you come to me. If you want someone to hold your hand, you go to someone else. Yes, I understand that there's going to be moments when I need to hold your hand. I'm not saying that I won't hold your hand. It all comes down to my coaching history, my coaching experience. I have found what works the best. When I was a teacher, I found out what works the best for whatever age group I taught. I taught K-12. to I know every age group, how to teach them, how to be effective. And then even when it comes to sports, taught swimming, I had these little kids, two and a half, three-year-old kids learning how to swim, do the butterfly, backstroke, everything, freestyle. You have to ask, how are you able to teach these kids greatness? How are you able to teach these kids to become these amazing swimmers? And it all stems from my process. And the process is, I know you have greatness within you. I just have to keep digging and digging and digging until I can pull it out. Now, you might not know it's there, but I see it. The parents, right? I have to have the support of the parents too, because when they see their kid struggling and like huffing and puffing and tired and exhausted, their instincts start to come in. Not so much of the fathers, a little bit sometimes, depending on the culture, but the mothers would be like, oh, can you go a little bit easier on him? Can you go a little bit easier on her? Okay, sure. If that's what you want, if that's who you want to raise, we can adjust. But I will tell you, for the parents who said, oh, can we go easy? You know, because these are just too hard, these lessons. They're exhausted after the lesson. I said, okay. I don't work with them again. And this is crazy, right? Because these lessons are extremely expensive. $50 for half an hour with me. That is expensive for swimming. And we gave results. So if I didn't want to work with a parent, it wasn't even about the money. It was about what I was teaching, what I was bringing. And when parents came to me, because other parents that I've been with clients for years would say, you know what, if you go to this swim school, you make sure you get Michael. And then when they finally get me, if they're able to get me, then of course we could have that conversation. We can go through the process. But I was always booked. And I remember one time I did a makeup day. I I came in on a day I had off because the pool was closed one day and all the lessons got backed up. So they needed another instructor to come in. It was summer break for me. I was a teacher. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be the person coming in doing all the lessons, makeup lessons, right? Well, I actually got a kid. And this kid was afraid of the deep end. And he had another great instructor. She was all right. When I was done with that lesson, the mom came to me and I talked about the story. I'm not going to go into detail because we need to get into the interview with Kian. The mom came to me and said, wow, that was the best lesson ever. He has learned more in 30 minutes with you than he has learned his entire swimming here. And I was like, yeah, it happens. And then she wanted to switch to me. And I said, no, it's not possible. I'm booked. And then she goes, I figured. When you get into that mindset, that discipline of what you can do, it's almost about being humble, but then understanding that you are confident, right? Confident and humble, putting together what you create. 
That is what I instill into people. We learn how to be humble, but we also learn how to be confident. You put those two together, you get a mixture for success. Can you become that person? And today we're going to be learning about that mixture with Kean and myself. Welcome, Key and you to Coaching Session. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. How are you? Doing well. Thanks so much for coming on. Today, we're going to be having you on as a mindset and transformational coach. Near and dear to my heart is mindset. If you know anything about me, what we do here in Coaching a Session, we do everything mindset because we understand the power of it. And when we have a different mindset coach come on to the podcast to talk about their work, we always get a different perspective. So I'm excited to learn about your life, your history, and the work that you do in your coaching work. Without me talking about your whole biography, please tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help them. Yeah, so my name is Kian Yu, and I'm from Vancouver, Canada. And I uh, recently ventured into this new, the new newfound joy or passion of, of helping people on their personal development journey. This was something that I always was very, very in love with in my early 20s, or maybe even before that, but not knowingly as a as a younger, younger teenager, I always seek to be better, but I never knew it was personal development. And as I became older, joined the workforce, understood that there's just so much more potential in life. And that really set me on to wanting to become the best version of myself. And as I pursued that journey, I felt passionate helping other people get on the personal development journey. And now take, I took the turn to commit my, my whole life to, to doing that, to help people become their best version of themselves, become their highest self, and basically just want to help people pursue the, the journey of having a transformation to be in the best shape that they can be, to have the strongest mindset and discipline that they can have and just pursue to be the best that they can be. I remember when I first went on my personal development journey, I didn't really consider it that. I just said, all right, I need to be in shape to get girls. I'm like 15 years old. You're in high school. You have to look the part sometimes, right? If you can walk the walk and talk to talk, you already won half the battle. I find that when people are struggling, whether it be relationship, career, um, personal life, it does stem down to fitness, right? How confident are you in your body? I know there is a movement of like body positivity that's more for women than for men. Men have to show up regardless if they want to or not. You don't see fat guys being called big and handsome, right? But a big lady could be called big and beautiful. So as men, we have a different path than the ladies. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? I would always love to take the higher path And many people struggle because they have a different path. That path is going to be unique to everyone. How do you help people find that path for themselves, whether it be fitness, whether it be finding a love for personal development and whatever that may be, a love for career, a purpose, a why? That path can be unique, as I said. How do you help people find that? Well, I think it comes down to the individual when they're ready for it themselves, they they'll find ways to be better. A lot of times, I at least at least for myself, what I've experienced before was just always having the negative thoughts and the, the nagging thoughts of wanting to be better and not doing things each and every day to become better. And as I went through that journey, like, hey, I just need to be a little bit better each day, that put me on a, like, it, it, it continuously put me on a quest to want to be better. And to help other people find that, I think it's just, poking at them, letting them know that, hey, you know, we can be better, we can continuously be better, and show up for them and show that I'm working on myself so I can work, uh, help them work on them, right? It's setting the example, being the leader that I wish I had, and just being that person five years from now, who I see myself five, 10 years from now, how is that person like? How does that person lead me? and be able to show up as that for other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, setting the example and showing them that Kian's showing up all the time. He's inspiring me. I should be on that path as well. 
it's important to lead by example. I find it to be the leader, right? Many coaches who become coaches do it because they went through the hardship by themselves and they say, you know what? There's an easier way. We can be the light. We could be the beacon that other people can look at and say, oh, this is what's possible in life. Rather than having to go through the hardship, the turmoils, the struggles, the traumas all by ourselves, because it is a journey and not many people can make it through alone. In life, we do have to realize that we are better and we're stronger together. So when we have good examples in our life of people who are doing great things, they have good fitness, good discipline, then we can say, oh, if they have it, we can have it, right? I talk about the Roger Bannister four-minute mile all the time, right? And it's not so much of a man doing a, you know, the mile in four minutes, but it's what happened after the fact that he ran that four-minute mile. Everyone thought it couldn't be done. And the moment he does it, people after people, person after person, they can just do this four minute mile like it was nothing, right? Before it was impossible, but now it is possible. So when you have a good example in your life or someone doing something that you perceived as impossible, it all of a sudden becomes possible. How are those limits affecting people when everything is possible? It's just that it might not have been done before. Well, I think it's just, yeah, if it's something that hasn't been done before, it might be a little bit hard to show someone tangibly. But I do believe if there's a vision, you if you can think about it and have that vision and truly have that belief to be able to achieve it, you need to back it up with the action and have be smart about it, of course, not just pound like pounding the pavement mindlessly, hoping that you get a result if you're doing something that's not working. But it's having a vision and working smart towards that goal and taking calculated action to achieve a certain destination, per se. Like, for example, Elon Musk wanting to be be on Mars. That sounds like it's an impossible task. Who knows if he's going to be able to achieve it in his lifetime or not, but he is taking calculated calculated steps to, to achieve that goal. So he's laid out a plan to to work on achieving that, right? And it to me, from following following his journey, it doesn't seem like he's doing things mindlessly, trying to fail the same way to achieve that result. It seems that he's always improving what he's doing and going back to the drawing board, calculating, hey, what's the next best step I need to take and kind of continuously innovate and tweak to achieve that goal or that dream that he has. And I think that's exactly the same thing with our personal development, with our own journey, whether it's in fitness, relationship, business, whatever it is, it's taking that step back, understanding what are the the strategic steps I need to take in order to achieve the results that I desire and having a plan to, to work through that. And I think a lot of people might struggle with coming up with the strategic plan. And that's where having a coach or a mentor or some leader or guidance really help you hone down on the proper implementation. When you talk about that, it's almost touching on the premise of immediate gratification because people think Elon can't make it to Mars or you know, we can't make it to Mars because it's not something that can happen instantly. It can take time. As you said, we could take calculated steps and we can get there. Many people, they see the staircase, they want to be on top of the staircase already, but they don't do the work, say, okay, I'm going to take each step. All right, I'm going to take each step and I'm going to get there. People want the quickest possible route. I don't blame them, right? Sometimes, you know, the fastest route is a straight line. So you're going from A to Z very quickly, but there's A, B, C, D. There's a whole bunch of other steps that we have to take to get to the end. Whether that be, as we said, fitness, career, whatever it is, there is a process. And when you can see someone go through that process, like a coach, a mentor, guide, as you said, that coach, that mentor, guide can put it in a way that the person understands it, it becomes more feasible. Because if you're just saying, okay, well, I have to lose 50 pounds or whatever, it's a daunting task, right? Because then you're going to think, well, how can I lose 50 pounds the quickest, right? Check out fad diets, maybe oh, those don't work. Okay, maybe I can do like a surgery. Yes, that's going to be a quick fix, but it doesn't really have long-term health benefits. So you have to ask yourself, is really the road to strength 
going to be a long journey or a fast journey. And it's always going to be a longer journey because when I started off doing fitness when I was 15, I couldn't lift that much, right? You know, you're building your muscle. And as you go on in the months and the years, you start to see more definition, your muscles start to become bigger, you become stronger. It didn't happen overnight. I had to have the patience. I had to have the discipline to keep on going. The good life, the good things in life take time. We have to be patient. When it comes to mindset, how can we help people understand that immediate gratification is not necessarily what we should be looking at, but the bigger picture? Well, for that, I I want to kind of talk about my goal setting process or my vision. And it's how I look at things. You know, we're often taught, hey, we should set smart goals, which I think is like specific, uh, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. I think that's what the, the smart goals are. And those are absolutely amazing to have. And you should have smart goals. But you should also take a step back and have a specific vision of where you want to be that is not time constrained. Because a lot of times when you set goals where you're like, okay, you know, I need to lose 30 pounds in the next 30 days. Let's just say it's realistic and let's just say it's possible. But you're trying so hard to achieve a certain goal within a specific time frame, and it becomes so daunting because the next thing you know, you're like, oh, it's been 15 days, but I've only lost, let's just say 10 pounds. I'm, I'm still 20 pounds behind. And you're, you're injecting that negative thought into your own journey, into your process. But if you were taking a step back and you're like, okay, you know, in 30 days, I do see myself super fit. I'm not so fixated on losing 30 pounds. I just want to feel the best that I can. And this is how I'm going to look. Now you detach yourself from a specific time constraint, measurable goal. Not saying you shouldn't have that, but you just become detached to that specific outcome where you're enjoying the process. You're enjoying that journey of what's going to happen in the next 30 days. I'm excited to see that. So it's kind of shifting that mindset and approaching it in a different way. So I do believe that you should have both, but you have your smart goal where it's kind of just the baseline, but don't become so attached to it. And then you have another vision of a specific outcome that you're looking for that's not time constrained. So even if after 30 days, you don't lose 30 pounds, but you lost, let's just say you lost 20 pounds, you feel great. Now you just know, I just need to prolong it a little bit longer. I'm not looking at the days. And with by the, by the time you know it, a few weeks pass and you're like, I lost 30 pounds. And yeah. you, you didn't go through that process of beating yourself up. Oh, I didn't lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Like this is, this is impossible. You just continue to take a step forward each and every single day, step by step, slowly going through the journey, enjoying the journey, not having any of these negative thoughts of, I got to hit this goal. I got to hit this goal. I got to hit this goal. But you go through the process and you're going through life. I'm enjoying this journey. I'm I'm almost there. I'm enjoying this journey. I'm almost there. I'm enjoying this journey. I'm almost there. And the next thing you know, you have an amazing transformation with your body, your mindset, your lifestyle, and you've developed healthy habits that never felt so restricting ever. Well, let me ask you a question. And this is going to be a great example for people. If I gave you everything you wanted in life right now, would you be happy? Yes or no? Yes. Why? And the reason why I say that is because every single day, I have a process that I go through every single day. And as long as I get through that process, anything can happen. And I know I treated myself well. I know I did the things that are my non-negotiable, my own daily habits that I took care of myself first. I gave myself the self-love that I need before going out into the world to serve other people. So as long as I take care of myself each and every single morning, anything can happen and it should not affect me that much just because as we wake up we have to be grateful that we're able to even open up our eyes put our feet on the floor have the opportunity to collect some wins and give yourself the self-love that you need first before even going out to the world to serve anybody else okay do you have materialistic goals in your life 100 percent. okay so let's say you are working towards something um i believe you're a tesla owner correct Exam. Okay. So you wanted that Tesla, right? That was something you wanted. You got it. You're like, I love this Tesla. That is a materialistic good. 
Yes. Maybe there was a point before you owned that Tesla, like I want this Tesla. Was mm -hmm. that a in in you know aspirational goal of yours? Yes. It okay, was cool. I always had a vision of wanting a, a white Tesla. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it I've I always try to achieve my vision. Whatever vision I have, I would work very hard to to achieve it. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the mat materialism, I do kind of put that later on. It's not um, as long, like I said, as long as I do things that take care of myself first, like sp spiritually and just personal, my own personal health and fitness, like that stuff's taken care of first, then the materialism can come after. Mm -hmm. But there is still an aspect that you earned that Tesla, yes or no? Yes, I would yeah. say yes. Yeah, so. you worked hard for that Tesla. It wasn't something that maybe mom or dad gave you. It's something you work for, correct? So when I ask, if I gave you everything, would you be happy? Would you have been satisfied with just getting that Tesla? Yes, in the beginning, right? Yeah, you, you got you got your Tesla, but it is so much sweeter when you did the hard work. Yes. Would you agree or would you not agree? I would 100% agree. It's the journey that is memorable. Not, It's not having that materialistic thing, mm -hmm. which will make you happy for the first little while, but it's kind of like, a facade you're you're it's something that will make you happy at a very surface level but it will never bring a certain joy or fulfillment of having that but the process of getting that knowing that you're putting in sweat sweat and tears to achieve a certain i guess a certain object that is materialistic that's more sentimental than the the object itself mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm talking about because I know people who are going to be listening to this and they're going to be saying, if I got everything I wanted, yes, I'll be happy. Right. Most people would. But for how long? Think about lot of winners, for example, like a lot of winner is going to win all that money. They'll be happy for whatever it is. But most of those winners go broke because they don't have the discipline. They don't have the financial literacy to keep that money. So if I gave you everything, if I gave the person that want everything, a client or whatever, they wouldn't be able to maintain it. Similar to how if I gave you the perfect body because you got liposuction or whatever, unless you staple your stomach and you physically can't consume the same amount of food you were eating previously, you're going to gain the weight back. So there is a process, right? The journey, we talk about it, but we're hinting at it. So I want to make it very relevant to people just right in front of their face. You can take the quick fix right the top of the staircase you can just teleport there you can get an elevator there but if you take each step there you're going to see you're growing as a person rather than just getting it immediately because sometimes you have to grow into the person that you want to become it's not something that automatically oh i just need to do this and everything is going to change for the better most people have a lot of work to do in their life when i work with clients it's not something that all right, let's just fix this, let's fix this. And then you're all fixed all of a sudden and, and, and they're 100% achievers. It can take a lot of time to go through all the garbage and rubble that they have in obstacles they have built in their life. And it's difficult sometimes for them to get over it because they're afraid, that fear of letting go of the person that they created to get the life that they have. But the life that they have right now is not the life that they want. So they're afraid to let go of what they have built for the sake of, I already spent all this time building this person, and they're afraid to relinquish that person to build the new person that they want, because it's a lot of work. And you know the subconscious mind, it does not like to exert energy. You're on the treadmill and you're like three, four minutes in, it sucks. And you're like, I want to stop, I want to stop. But we can't stop, we have to keep on pushing, right? Let's get into that conversation. Yeah, so I think a lot of times it's developing that healthy habit, developing the the healthy disciplines, and being a a person that like you you develop your character to have these things. You can get all the nicest things in the world, but if you haven't developed your character to become somebody that is like you said, financial liter literate, or somebody that has developed the healthy habits or the discipline to maintain that specific type of lifestyle or that specific type of materialism, it, it can go away very, very fast. Just because, for example, if if you were somebody who won the lottery and somebody came up to you and just like, hey, you know, 
you won the lottery, can I have some money? And if you don't have that character built to be able to say no, I'm sure that that money will be given away very fast because you think like, oh, well, I, I, I won the lottery. I can give that away. That'll be okay. But it's, it's not, you, you need to develop that discipline and that character of being somebody who's able to, to be in control of their own, own lives where, wherever they are. Because that's a big external change for somebody if they were handed, handed everything that, um, that they didn't work for. It's about the work, right? Like when you put in the work to get something, you can appreciate it more. You know, as much as I love parents who do well for their children, the children don't appreciate what they have, right? The entitlement comes in. Our generation is full of that, where children just don't understand. I'm not saying they're spoiled. It's just that they're ignorant to the fact of struggle. You're probably familiar with the quote, you know, uh, tough times create strong men, strong men create easy times, easy times create weak men. That cycle, it is something that we have to break. It is something that we have to understand because even as a parent, you can do extremely well. For example, I'll use me at, you know, growing up, grew, grew up poor, right? Uh, struggle. But today, I have things that are good, right? You know, I, I don't have to struggle the same way I grew up. My child, will probably never go through exactly what I went through. But I want to give him a taste of it because I understand that adversity creates strength. So I need to make sure just because I created easy times for him and he gets everything he wants, I need to make sure that he understands that these easy times are not an opportunity to be weak. Because if he's going to be weak, he's going to choose to create a hard time for himself and if not for himself, for the next generation to come. So we have to look at the mindset of generation after generation. How do we develop strong individuals that even if they get everything, that even if they live in abundance, how can we make that something that stands the test of time generation after generation? I think something like that is, it comes from setting that example of what it takes to become a man of discipline, a man of integrity, a man of hard work, even though you have everything that that you have in your life. So no matter how great your life is, if you're still showing up each and every day doing the hard things, which is waking up to go to the gym every morning, which is continuously working on yourself and developing yourself and continuously doing the things that people see, oh, this is too hard to do. I, I can't do that every day. And if they see that you're able to do that, regardless of your situation, even if you're down in the trenches and you're still showing up each and every day, even though if you're on a pedestal and you have everything great going on in your life and you're still showing up doing the exact same core fundamental routine and habits, I think setting that example will then lead other men to, to see, Hey, it's not all about, it's not all about the external world, but it's all about working on our internal world. And as they develop that sense, they'll understand what it takes to become a man of integrity, a man of discipline, a man of healthy habits. Society doesn't make it easy, though. No, not at all. But I think that's just it comes just it just comes down to the awareness of the individual finally being fed up with all the nagging thoughts in their head of I got to be better. I got to be better. I got to be better. And eventually somebody in their life will show up with those healthy disciplines, with those healthy habits that sparks something inside them and say like, hey, I should be more like that. And it's just one person after another creating a ripple effect. If I'm able to help somebody that's arms reach away, become a little bit better, and they go on that journey of personal development, then they have somebody else that's an arms reach away from them that see them improving. And they ask, hey, what are you doing to be better? How are you doing this and showing up every single day to become better, then they inspire another person and then so forth. And that's kind of how the ripple effect of personal development will work. That's very true. However, people are going to accept the lazy life. Think of gamers for an example, right? Their father can be extremely disciplined. I know a man, he's in his 60s currently right now. I mean, he's in better shape than me, you know, like he he got huge muscles. He's, he's able to do cardio crazy in the gym. And he has a son 
And the son just didn't want anything to do with fitness, didn't want anything to do with greatness. He accepted mediocrity. And though the father was there as that example, that discipline factor, society won. Oh, there's video games, there's easy, you know, like I, I can have everything given to me. How can we overcome the easiness? Because if you know anything about the mind, again, it loves easy. So when you have to choose the easy path, the hard path, the easy way or the difficult way, most people are going to choose the easy road, right? Even if you have that example, as, as what I said, that is one example. Of course, there's many other examples where there is a strong father, maybe strong leader, mentor that can guide a bunch of young men or women to a better discipline. But just looking at the society aspect, it makes it very easy for people to say, you know what, not today. I think it's coming down to the individual's highest values. What is it that they put up on their highest values? And if it's something that, for example, if it's gaming, maybe they just need to be communicated in a way where it's like, is your goal to become a professional gamer? Right? Are you looking to become one of the best person in, in the gaming industry and, and be one of the, the top players in a specific game? If it is, maybe it might be showing them, hey, the top players in this type of game, they work on their health. They are constantly working out. They're working on their their fitness because when you work on your fitness, it improves your, your mind, your reflexes. And the outcome of that will help you perform better in, in gaming. So it's kind of trying to find ways to align their, their highest values to what can actually benefit that i think um if it's like I, I haven't worked with a gamer like that so i can't really say but if i were to work with somebody like that i would ask them like what is their highest value what do they care about what what's it what's so important to them that they need to do that first you know what are the top five things that just matter to them so much and once you understand what what they value we can see hey how can we incorporate healthy habits into being aligned with your your values when you put it that way it is what they should be going after right figuring out what value are they trying to get or attain from that video game typically people who are playing video games i've worked with gamers before they have inadequacies that they fill in with a video game so for example let's say they're you know it's lord of the rings or something right it's a game that they, that they fight some dragons so they're fighting dragons, they're defeating the dragons in the game. They're the knights that everyone loves and admire, right? That's what they want in their life, love and admiration. So they get it from the game, but they don't choose to get it from real life because it's easier typically to get it from the game. It's a little bit quicker because they're gonna have to work on themselves. They're gonna have to work on discipline. And we just look at it as, well, this is the goal. This is what you're trying to create in the video game. How can we start to implement it in micro steps in our life, right? Because if we just do it, you know, too much is going to jolt us to like, you know, fear. It's like, oh, you know, like this is daunting and scary. Like if you're on the high dive, you should probably jump on the side of the pool and then maybe go to the regular diving board. And then you can eventually work your way up to the high dive. Similar to how we go after our higher values, as you said. So we give ourselves the values. We understand what we would like to attain, what our video game is giving us, because it can be giving us a sense of, of worth, of camaraderie, especially if it's like a multiplayer game, things along those lines. But at the end of the day, you have to ask, are you showing up? You're like, like, is this the life you want to live? 100%. But all of that being said, it's important that, you know, mindset is, is something we work on all the time. We have to do the work. We have to be deliberate in how we operate in each of our days. And if we are not being deliberate, we have to ask ourselves, like, what is really going on in our mind? And many people struggle with it because they don't want to dive deep into their mind because it could be a lot of dark secrets that they don't want to uncover again. And that is what you do. You help people understand their mind, whether it be with fitness, nutrition, career relationships, all of the above, because it's important that we can have the goodness in our life, but we do have to know how to get there. And the work that you do in our conversation today, it wasn't an easy one. I know that for sure, but it helps us understand that mindset is full of twists and turns. And if we can find the right path, then we can get to our most desired life. And as we begin to wrap up, I would love to get some final words from you and then to please tell the audience where they can find you. Oh, 
I think if uh, you're interested in pursuing the the journey of personal development, understand that it's not just about reading self help books. It's not just about listening to audiobooks or podcasts. It's also about feeding your body the proper food and nutrition. It's also about training your broad your body to be able to to lose fat, build muscle, and it's not just all about reading. It's about everything as a whole. It's to work on your emotions, your relationship, your mental, your physical, and all the above, and trying to be and pursue the best version that you can be. And where you can find me, I'm 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 very active on Instagram. It's at Kianyu, at K-E-A-N-E-Y-U. And if you ever want want to chat or have any questions, you can always hit me up in the DM. I'm always on on my phone. So that's the easiest and quickest place to reach me. Perfect. And I'll definitely make it easy for everyone. All the links are going to be in the description box below. Check him out, follow him on Instagram and learn about the greatness that he's doing, right? It starts with maybe a little bit of fitness and then it can evolve into all aspects of our life. Discipline yourself to become better each and every day. Love yourself, give yourself the care you need and you'll start to see that the life that you dream of can become reality. I would like to thank you so much, Keen Yu, for coming on Coaching in Session. Good conversation today. All right, everyone. I'd like to thank you so much for watching that interview with Key and Yu and myself. What went on was a mindset conversation. Mindset and transformational coaching is not going to be something that is a straightforward type of coaching. That is why many mindset coaches, we do not do a cookie cutter program that everyone can follow. We're not a Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins is, you know, general life coach. He talks about business mastery. He talks about life, general happiness. And it's, it's all blanket. We can do that with life coaching. But when it comes to mindset coaching, it has to be individualized because what is going on for you is different. As Kian said, your values are going to be different because if you have different values and I'm over here just targeting about things that don't matter, it's not going to be relevant and pertinent to you. You're not going to take action. And sometimes when people they start going to the gym because their dad makes them or their mom makes them or whatever, right? They resent it almost because they're like, I don't like this because maybe they're being pushed to do it because their parents said, this was my dream. I want it to be your dream. So we have to do our job as parents or as people that when we're raising children, that we give them exactly what they're looking for. Because when you're born, you're born with what? 400 plus neurological pathways and that's different it's going to be unique to every baby that's why some babies are just different so when they're growing up how do you treat them growing up because that's going to change their paths right what type of music do they listen to how do you speak to them what type of foods do they eat? that's going to change their path what type of toys do they play with that's going to change their path it sounds crazy that everything that comes to mindset starts at such a young age but just because it starts at an early age, it doesn't mean that we can't change it at a later age called neuroplasticity. We can change the way we think. Most people are stuck in a way of thinking that is not congruent with what they're trying to get, the results they're trying to reach. So they're stuck. They're trying to figure out, well, how do I do this? And the simple answer is they don't know how because their upbringing is not that. Their current lifestyle is not that. And their future won't be it either if they can't figure out, well, how can I transform my life into the person that I can see myself becoming? We have to be able to see that vision of who we can become. Sometimes it's difficult when all we see is hardship, all we see is struggle. And we have to have good examples of men, especially men, because we can look at the ladies for a second, right? An example of a female role model today is what Kamala Harris, Cardi B, Kim Kardashian. Those are not good examples of women. Yet, there are so many great examples of women that are just not promoted as, as ferociously. Your Alicia Keys, your uh, Maya Angelou's, you know, those people. I can go on of all the amazing ladies who have done something who have created something, who have cultivated something with their being, but yet society touts something different when it comes to ladies, the popularity, the, the glamour, right? 
Ladies go after that. Men, right? You know, who are the men we idolize? The LeBron Jameses, the Michael Jordans, right? Like basketball, right? Soccer, right? Soccer players, the top ones. Ronaldo. Those people are going to be people that we aspire to be, maybe, right? People we love. And we might say, well, how did they get there? We might not even want to have a fraction of what they have. But yet, we see what they have accomplished. We can see it's possible. And then we can see the disparity also. This is a far leap for me to reach what they have. So maybe they say, you know what? I can't get that. It's too much work. And I understand it's a lot of work. But we need to do our job. We have to have self-discipline. We have to have a sense of self-worth and understand our values and ask, what do we want? You can't get things given to you. LeBron James can't just say, okay, you're in the NBA. Yeah. If you were in the NBA, you'll probably get killed. All right? Not physically, but like, you know, just mentally, right? Those players in there, in that game, they can be ruthless. And it's a mind game in that basketball. It's a mind game in the soccer. It's a mind game in football. They're going to try to break you down bit by bit. And if you don't have the mental fortitude, if you have not built yourself up mentally and physically, you are not going to be able to stay in the game. It's easy to say you want something, but are you willing to build to get it? Most people want the empire, but many people are not willing to put in the foundation. So if you're willing to put in the foundation, if you're willing to give your life an opportunity for success, glory, abundance, Reach out to Kian, reach out to us at Revenant Concepts and start that journey. Start the mindset process for you to transform your life. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park, but it will be something that you never regret in life. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coachinginsession at gmail.com and I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.